Saxon Algebra 1 half, lesson 123. Dun, 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 dun. Last lesson, you guys. The last lesson is a little bit theoretical, but it's super important, and we're going to rely on this information again and again next year. We're also going to review this every year. Um, and build on it slightly as we go. But the first part of it, that's the second part. The first part of it is really simple, but a little mind blowing -y. A no, uh, that When we use the word number, what we mean is an idea. Okay, so when I say the, let me show, let me show both of them. A numeral is a symbol. So if I say the number five, I can make that shape, right? And you recognize that shape and you learned how to make it when you were a little kid. But the symbol is different than the idea of knowing that it's that many things, right? One, two, three, four, five. This is the idea of five. This is the symbol of five. We can change the numerals without changing the number. So for example, if we take one half and we multiply it by let's say three over three and we get three over six, we have changed the numerals from one half to three six, right? Those are different symbols, they look different, but the idea is the same. So we say it's the same number, even though obviously it looks different because the idea is exactly the same. Three six is the same idea as one half. It's just cut in smaller pieces, right? Um, we change the numerals, but the number remains the same. The numerals are the symbol. The numbers are the idea that that symbol represents. represents. Subtle, little difference, but super important as we go. Um, I want to start with a fresh page for part B. That's all I have to say about part A. Part B, we're going to make a great big old chart. So you need the better part of a page to draw. And we're going to call this the real numbers. And what we're going to do is draw big old square on our page. And we're gonna talk about the different groups of numbers, the weird names we give them, and what they mean. I'm gonna divide it right here, and I'm gonna put this into a title. The B is kind of extra, but this is the this is a map of all the groups of numbers that make up the real numbers. Okay, let's start at the beginning. When you were a baby, and probably the, one of the first things after you were born, your parents probably looked at your fingers and toes and counted them. And they taught you very soon after how to count them too, right? And they went like this: one, two, three four, five, and so on, right? These are called, I didn't make my box big enough, the natural or counting numbers. And that's kind of easy to remember because it's how we naturally learn how to count, right? That is the smallest subset of numbers that we are going to talk about. When you got a little older, your vision, your understanding of math expanded a little bit because one day you put your hand in the cookie jar and you felt around and you suddenly understood the concept of zero. This is the group of whole numbers that we simply add zero to the natural slash counting numbers. Okay? So we expand the, the set from natural to whole just by adding zero, okay? Then you got a little older and 
you learned about borrowing money. And you learned that sometimes you could go into debt right? Or maybe you even, uh, maybe you got an allowance and you asked your parents to give you an advance on your allowance. And you understood that you could have something like negative $5. That's where if, you know, your mom gave you $5 before your allowance got paid, she's not going to pay your allowance next week because you are in debt to her. So we learned about The fact that every counting number has a negative partner and then there's zero chilling right in the middle, right? These guys have a fancy name. These are the integers, okay? So they're the natural numbers plus the zero plus all the negatives, right? Remember, zero does not have a negative. Zero is the only number that um, doesn't have a positive and negative version of itself, all right? Then, after this, you hit middle school, or you know, it was probably earlier if you have siblings. And we learned a group of numbers called the rationals. And this one we're gonna do a written definition. A rational number is any number that can be expressed as a fraction. So that includes these, right? Because we can put a one over any of these numbers and express them as a fraction. So it includes any fraction you can think of. It includes decimals. It includes percents. And in the category of decimals, it includes infinite decimals that repeat, right? You know how some decimals um, we write as like 0 0.3 repeating? This is considered a rational number because a number that has repeating decimals can be written as a fraction. And at the toward the end of Algebra 2, I'm going to teach you how to do that. We'll come back to this picture again. All right, so rational numbers are any that can be expressed as a fraction or a decimal or a percent, and that includes infinite decimals that repeat, and that's an example of what that would look like. Over here, in the other category of real numbers, is a group that does not overlap with these guys at all. This dude is in his own category, and these are the irrationals. Right, and this is numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction. Okay, so Rationals can be expressed as fractions. Irrationals cannot. Some really classic examples of irrationals are pi and the square root of 2. They both have infinite decimals that do not repeat. Okay, and this is probably the most important definition of an irrational. Infinite decimals that do not repeat are irrationals. Infinite decimals that do repeat, I'll write do to contrast it, um, are rationals. That's the trickiest thing to remember. Okay, um, not all square roots are irrationals, but the ones that can't be simplified, a lot of them are irrationals. And that's why we just leave them in this shape rather than trying to write them as a decimal number. It's super hard. All right, so this whole group of numbers, 
these guys all fit inside of each other, right? They're all, um, the rational numbers include the integers, the integers include the whole numbers, the whole numbers include the natural or counting numbers. These guys all like telescope inside of each other and the irrationals are like the goofballs that don't overlap at all with these guys. Now it's often at this point in my explanation, which by the way, I'm almost done with. We just have one quick example. Um, a student will look at this title and say the real numbers and say, oh, what, are there some numbers that are not real? To which I say, yes, that's exactly right. We're going to add in the future another box over here, separate from the real numbers, that will be called the imaginary numbers. What, right? So look forward to that. This box is gonna get a little bit bigger, um, but just one more category, but we'll have this thing called the imaginary numbers. All of this will stay the same, and we're going to use this information in different ways in a variety of different problems. So I want you to just get it in your head and start thinking about it. And we will um, come back to this diagram in the future. What do the problems look like in this? Two, this is the question. To which number sets discussed in this lesson do A minus three and B, two over three, B long. Okay, so in other words, what we're supposed to be doing is saying, which sets would include negative three? Okay, it's not a natural or counting number, is it? And it's not a whole number, but it is an integer. And it is a real number, because it can be written as a fraction, right? Negative three over one rational and it's in the whole big category here so it can also be a real that's the answer negative three is a member of the integers the rationals and the reals okay what about two-thirds two-thirds is not a counting number it's not a whole number it's not an integer it is a rational a rational not irrational we know it's not an irrational because that only includes infinite decimals that do not repeat. Um, this can be written as an infinite decimal, right? It is equal to 0 0.6 repeating, but it repeats with a pattern, so that makes it a rational. It's not an irrational. So this one is just a rational and it's a real because it fits in this big box. The only numbers that don't fit in the real box are those imaginary numbers that I mentioned, but we haven't learned those yet. We don't have that in our chart. All right, so this is the only kind of problem that you will get for this chart, all right? Make sure that you've drawn this exactly the way I have drawn it in your notes. Put it in the front or back cover of your binder notebook, whatever, um, because next, and, and PS students, hang on to your most, you should hang on to all your homework notebooks, but keep your most recent notebook handy because next year you're gonna want all of those formulas at your fingertips. So make sure you keep that one close at hand. I, my kids used to give me all their homework books and I would you know, store them in boxes in case we ever needed them. Make sure you don't give them all back to your mom. Save your most recent book so that you've got all, your most recent homework book so that you've got all of your formulas um, in those covers. Dun, da, 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 the end of algebra one half new lessons. Congratulations, this is a very exciting moment. Take a minute right now and pat yourself on the back. This has been a weird, rough year. Every year in math is no fooling around, but this has been a weird one and you persevered and we made it through to the end and now all you have to do is take a final exam. Oh, it's gonna be so easy. Don't even worry about it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.